Okay, so now we're doing fats and insulin resistance and inflammation. We've heard so many things about the bad qualities, the evil qualities of seed oil, of little egg acid. I, I thought maybe we should have some data to support that. Maybe it's not as bad as we think it is. And it's kind of a context. It's still something you can learn. And here are these words again. I hope you learn them and bring them in. You know what seed oil is. Seed oil is commonly referred to as linoleic acid. Some people go, hey, seed oil is omega-6. That's true. But does that make arachidonic acid a seed oil? So it gets a little confusing. Be very specific. Linoleic acid is an omega-6. Uh, seed oil, arachidonic acid is generally not referred to as a seed oil at all. Okay, and they're both omega-6. So start to know more and more about it, be a little coherent, be a little more self-aware. These are small changes you can make that are gonna make a big change in your health. Take my word for it, it's a big deal. All right, so fats and inflammation broken down into insulin resistance or not. As we've done before, we're breaking all this down into omega-6-3, then omega-6, then omega-3, and into those individual fatty acids. That's what we have to do to have a specific conversation. Stop being these general references that aren't really helping us that much. The analysis, 6-3, then we're breaking into 6, then we're breaking into 3, and the key essential fatty acids for 6 are arachidonic acid, linoleic acid, EPA and DHA for omega-3. And every group we're going to talk about insulin-resistant people, as a group and non-insulin resistant group of people as a group. That data, and it's very important. In my world, everybody is broken into two groups of people, insulin resistant, and they have their set of labs, which are often very different than people who are not insulin resistant. So here's a study that is commonly referred to as kind of popular in the people that I talk to and so on and so forth. It came out in, sorry, 2018 and uh, out of Mayo, Let's go through it. So what is commonly believed but not true is that the diet linoleic acid causes inflammation. Linoleic acid in your diet causes inflammation hypothesis. Suggests that consuming high levels of linoleic acid. So how would you get high levels of linoleic acid? You eat a lot of processed foods, which is kind of everybody in the United States is culpable of that, uh, or you're glugging vegetable oil. So it's kind of extreme on the glugging part or, you, or you're really cooking a lot. But for those who eat out a lot, they get a lot of linoleic acid. You know, the canola oil is clearly the cheapest oil that restaurants cook with, period. It's not olive oil, certainly not uh, coconut oil. It's cheap canola oil. But for those who eat at home, this tends not to be an issue. But let me go on. Okay, they say it can directly promote inflammation in the body. Current scientific information research largely does not support this claim. Yeah. Most studies finding little to no evidence that dietary Linoleic acid significantly increases inflammatory markers in healthy individuals. Dietary linoleic acid increases inflammatory markers. So there's no evidence to support that. So my thought here, given my data, a little spoiler alert, and that is that if they mean by healthy individuals, non-insulin resistant people, then I would agree with that. But if they're looking at the large majority in the American population that are insulin resistant, then higher amounts of linoleic acid, as you will see, does result in inflammation. There's the study, you can jump on it. So here's the omega-6-3, and what do we see? Here's CRP, which we're gonna be using. CRP is our uh, C-reactive protein, HS, high sensitivity CRP. Zero, you want under one, okay? Under one is where everybody should be. Anything above that, nine is really pretty high. I've had higher, but nine is fairly high. So what are we seeing here? The green is non-insulin resistant people, and the red is insulin resistant people. So what we say is the worse the relationship, the worse, the higher the ratio of omega-6 to 3, the worse it is for insulin resistant people only. The lower the relationship, omega-6-3, remember, ratio, that's what we're talking about. That's why it's kind of a useless reference. The lower the 6-3 ratio for non-insulin resistant people, the worse it is. So it's like, what? I thought it was supposed to be better. Hmm. You keep thinking. So the summary of omega-6 and CRP. Let's just go over the top. This is everybody, right? We're not breaking in any group. You have omega-6 and linoleic acid and arachidonic acid, the two acids that make up 95% of omega-6s, okay? So first we can say, all right, the less, this says the less omega-6 you have, the higher will be the, your CRP. The higher will be your inflammation. What? The less omega-6, the higher your inflammation? That's crazy. Now let's find out who's making that happen. All right, this is now everybody in one group. 
Linoleic acid, pretty much a straight line. It hovers around midpoint, which is 25, right? It's a little higher when they're a little higher, seems to be lower in CRP, a little lower creates, but it's almost a straight line. It's very hard to point to. So I'd say it's almost a level line for linoleic acid. It's almost irrelevant. Arachidonic acid, however, is a huge change. It's black and white. You go, the more arachidonic acid you have, the lower inflammation. Wait a minute, didn't we just hear that we've been, it's, we've been, don't eat animal products because they have arachidonic acid that's, it's pro-inflammatory. Yeah, you don't wanna do that. You're gonna have a heart attack. Isn't that what you've been hearing? And what I just read you on the study saying, you know, Actually, for linoleic acid, it's not that bad, but they don't mention the evil pro-inflammatory arachidonic acid, which obviously is not the case here. Okay, well, maybe it's going to be the case for one of the two groups as we break it up. Now let's look down here. So green is non-insulin resistance. Red is IR people, right? They both pretty much have the same pattern. It's a little more dramatic with so higher CRP, so higher omega-6 is lower inflammation, especially for non-insulin resistant people. Higher omega-6, lower inflammation. That's crazy. That's not what you heard. This is like crazy. All right, now let's go to linoleic acid, the evil one, right? The seed oil. Wait a minute. So what we see is the higher amount of linoleic acid, the lower your inflammation. We've definitely not heard that one before. We're saying non-insulin resistant people need to have more linoleic acid to lower their inflammation. It's a component. I would say, again, it hovers pretty close. When you look at it, here's mid-range, 25, 26, as we showed a few slides ago, a few videos ago. It is interesting, higher. So it's not all that bad in this case. However, however, for insulin resistant people, it is clearly the more linoleic acid you have, the more inf inflammation you have. That's black or white, as predicted. So that's what they're talking about. The majority of the population in the United States is insulin resistant. So the average doc goes, yeah, you're right. More linoleic acid, more inflammation. They don't say, they don't whisper in your ear saying, if you are insulin resistant. Okay, what do we have over here? Now we get into arachidonic acid. I just said, hey, for everybody, it drops, you know, the more you have, the lower your inflammation. Is that really true? Let's break it down. Wow. It is really true. It's really true for both. It really doesn't matter if you're insulin resistant or not. One is a difference in amount, but the, the direction and the angle is almost identical. This shows that low arachidonic acid leads to high CRP. Low arachidonic acid. Low fat that you get from animal products. Low. Not eating enough animal products with animal fats will lead to inflammation. Never heard that one before. Okay, summary of omega-3 in inflammation. What do we see? So we're going to do... Omega-3, DHA, and EPA, right? Right across the top, just for everybody. We're not breaking it into the groups. All right, omega-3. Well, it says, this one we got figured out. The more omega-3 you have, right? Right here, the higher this number is over here, the lower is your inflammation. You knew that, we knew that, that's a no-brainer. Really didn't need to go any further, but let's go a little further. There's one more of a driver of that anti-inflammation than the other. So DHA, which is about twice the percentage of EPA, right? It's about two to one ratio. So we find, yep, the more DHA you have for everybody now, the lower will be your inflammation. What about EPA? EPA is almost a flat line. It's almost a flat line. So it's, yeah, a little more makes a difference. Now let's break it down and your eyes are gonna pop. So omega-3, so here's omega-3, the higher here. Now let's talk just general omega-3. Omega-3, the higher omega-3 you have here, the greater is your inflammation for non-insulin resistant people. Non-insulin resistant people who have higher omega-3, see, higher, have higher inflammation. That doesn't make sense. Houston, we have another problem here. We have another problem. Let's find out who's making it. But if you have lower amounts of, if you're insulin resistant, if you have lower amounts of omega-3, you will have higher inflammation. We all knew that. That was kind of, so what you knew was catered to the insulin resistant group. Let's break it down. Who's, who's making that inflammation happen? Here's the problem, DHA. The midpoint for DHA is around three. Saw that a few slides ago. All right, when we're above, for non-insulin resistant people, DHA can be inflammatory. You know, I need to tell you something you probably never knew before. And that is, my wife has a channel, a whole separate channel, has nothing to do with me. We actually started together on YouTube. But she's all about cooking. And her focus is on low carb, which is now what they call it back then. And when you started, it was ketogenic. So now it's Judy's Kitchen. And let me tell you, I have to do all the filming of this. I hope you 
watch her videos to make my time worthwhile. It's just amazing what she comes up with. This is how we live. We don't do, I don't do the sweets that we cover. This is our lifestyle. So it's not from something we're just making up. It's something from our daily existence. Consider watching her channel as well. The link is below. So a component in fish oil, DHA, can be inflammatory when it's above mid-range. That's a pretty precise number to get to. You need three, you don't need higher. More is not better, which is kind of what most people think. I'll have more, I'll double mine. I want to be really healthy. Well, no, you can't be really healthy. You just need an adequate amount, not more. But for insulin resistant people, it is same old story. They are deficient. So the more deficient they are in DHA, the more inflamed they will be. Again, that whole story about inflammation with low omega-3 is an insulin resistance story. Now with EPA, EPA is not much of a story. It's a flat line. It's kind of irrelevant for non-insulin resistant people. And again, we could say the deficiency of EPA with insulin resistant people leads to more inflammation. So it's the same story. That's been pretty consistent, right? Decrease, 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 just not as dramatic over here. So the story here of all of this is DHA can be inflammatory above midline for insulin resistant people. You've never heard that before. Okay, let's go deeper. So what I did here, I'm not gonna go through each line. I took all the different populations, LabCorp, NHANES, Omega Quant, what were their ranges? What was their midpoint? And I wanted to get a collective midpoint number. And I put in my data. My data was a little higher in some and a little lower in others. So here's what I've come up with is the kind of quintessential for me, midpoint for linoleic acid, for arachidonic acid. These are the two omega-6s, right? Because we're gonna look at this. And omega-3, DHA, these are perfect. Two to one, 1 1.5, double it, three. 12, double it, it's 24. So you're pretty much at two to one. Pretty consistent with my data and others as well. Plug these midpoints into your charts, into the charts we just looked at, but also you can use these numbers when you get to your labs and saying, where am I? You know, how is this? And so that's why these, these, these videos hopefully are immediately helpful to you. Okay, summary of omega-6 and CRP. Now we're plugging in the midpoint. Here's 25 and we see linoleic acid. It's pretty much hovers around 25. It's a, not quite a flat line, but nearly. And we have down here, linoleic acid, there's the 25. We find above 25 for non-insulin resistant people, above 25 for non-insulin resistant people, meaning having greater amount of linoleic acid leads to lower CRP. Whereas having a greater amount of linoleic acid, bringing it up to midpoint is actually inflammatory. You go, whoa, Houston, we have another problem here. Not everything fits in perfectly, but the point here is Insulin resistant people versus non-insulin resistant people have exactly the opposite reaction to linoleic acid. What about arachidonic acid? There you go, right? Here's midpoint is 12. What we find is, look at this really is fascinating. Midpoint is of the range, right? Of all those numbers. Midpoint of range is like, that's exactly where zero inflammation is for everybody. So if they're at 12, great. More than that, we'll find out. Less than that, we'll find out. Here we go. But we have the same thing. Arachidonic acid decreased the same amount, but here is 12. 12 is kind of what they're shooting for. So as predicted here and here, this makes sense. The more arachidonic acid you have, the lower is your inflammation regardless. Here with arachidonic acid, midpoint is not that big of a deal when we break it down into the two groups. Um, it seems to be the optimal point for zero inflammation. Okay, summary of omega-3. Plugging in, here's the omega-3. We've talked about that before. So now we say, all right, there's the midpoint. DHA, it's just like arachidonic acid was. You start at the midpoint. If you have the midpoint, you have zero inflammation. That's for everybody. Now let's go down to the two groups. Again, look at this. The midpoint exactly. If you have above the midpoint, you have inflammation if you're a non-insulin resistant person. You don't need to be above. You just need to be at that. And for insulin resistant people, if they're deficient, they're going to have more inflammation. The problem is too much DHA for non-insulin resistant people. And the story's always been about too little is a problem. Now, pretty much we said this before. So midpoint for EPA is pretty much a flat line for non-insulin resistance, not a story. A little deficiency increases inflammation, is associated with, it's correlated with inflammation. So what we're seeing here, let's throw these together. DHA and arachidonic acid had similar patterns. What are we seeing? Arachidonic acid, this is now the dots are insulin resistant people. 
right? Dot, 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 the broken line. So for what we have for both insulin resistance and non-insulin resistance, the less arachidonic acid you have, the higher was the probability you were going to have inflammation, right? The less you had was the higher inflammation. Whereas DHA for non-insulin resistant people could be inflammatory above midpoint. Never heard that before. Don't tell me you have. Till next time. So if this is something that you're interested in, that is a topic that I obviously go deeper in, in terms of labs, in terms of how to do it, in terms of why you would want to do it, various topics, as you've seen that I've done in the past, then please let me know below in a comment. Till then.